Hi, my name is Guy Wallace, and in this pack video short, we're going to discuss facilitator tips 10, 11, and 12. PACT is an acronym. It stands for Performance Based, Accelerated, Customer and Stakeholder Driven, Training and Development of Any Blend. The 12 facilitation rules and guidelines are to help you, the facilitator, facilitate a group of master performers, subject matter experts, sometimes novice performers, and sometimes managers and supervisors. Be legible on the flip chart. My rule is neatness doesn't count, legibility does. Even if you are going to be word processing what gets produced on the flip chart pages, there are times when I've had facilitators who couldn't even read their own writing, couldn't remember what they had intended the words to say or the scribbles to me. So be careful. Take the time necessary to get it legible. When you're working with a group and they're giving you rapid fire responses to your questions, there are times when you're going to have to ask them to slow down so that you can capture this legibly enough. It doesn't have to be neat. In fact, most flip chart pages coming out of these kinds of processes are anything but neat, but they must be legible. Beware of groupthink. If there's somebody dominant in the room that's acting dominant or just is because of their reputation, always look for group thinking, where everybody concedes too easily, too readily, to what was said. This is a case where you may have to go to the person that is the domineering person, deliberately or inadvertently, and ask them for their help ask them to also ask the rest of the group what they think before they give their answer and then for them to give their answer at the end. And be careful about that. Of course, this is very tricky. When I'm asking for master performers, what I've typically found is that all master performers have a bit of an ego. All of them know that they're master performers. In fact, I kick off these meetings by saying, you're all master performers except for some of those that are subject matter experts in something narrow, like the tool set or the policies and procedures or compliance, and they aren't the master performers who are doing the job of the target audience that we're focused on. But I declare to the master performers that you are the master performers, that you have been hand-picked to be in this meeting to generate this consensus data. But we can't all agree on everything, and it's unlikely that that would happen. People use different words to express things, and they use the same words to express different things. When I introduce those concepts to them, I suggest to them that I've got to be careful about groupthink. I really want to know what everybody thinks. If I ask a question and get a response, I'll do my face poll to see if everybody concedes to that. If they're all nodding their head yes, then I begin to worry. And so I will ask an individual Tell me more about this. Confirm this verbally for me. Embellish what I've captured here. Tell me a bit more. And then go to another person to do that. I tell groups at the beginning of the meetings that I'm going to assign parking lot valets. In fact, this is a self-parking lot. If you have an idea and it's not part of the process at the moment, but it's something that we're going to do later on, I will set up a couple of blank flip charts on the wall with post-it notes nearby and pens and ask them to go self-park their idea in the parking lot. Now I have one of the flip chart pages that's the open parking lot issues and concepts and ideas and concerns that the members of the team have and I'll post those on one. Once we've addressed them and closed them out, I'll move them to the closed parking lot. So I've introduced these two parking lots to them so that they understand that. If it's untimely, I'm not going to go on a tangent and answer something prematurely. We're going to get to that later. So when we do get to it later, it behooves me to make sure that I go over to the open parking lot, grab the post-it note that's relevant, and then physically move it to where the closed parking lot is and to confirm with the person that wrote that up there in the first place that we have indeed answered their question, addressed their concern,
close out that open issue. And if we haven't, well, we move it right back to the open parking lot here and deal with it until we can close it out. If it's something that's not going to be closed out ever, by intention, in our meeting, but is something that the project steering team perhaps needs to hear about, then I will make a special section of the open parking lot for those kinds of issues and let them know declaratively that I'm not going to address that in this meeting, but that I'm willing to capture those things and take them forward to the project steering team. I might even suggest that they'll want to contact the person that volunteered them about this issue so that when I introduce it to the project steering team, there'll be at least one project steering team member who has also heard about this issue, this concern, whatever it might be. The 12 rules and guidelines are intended to help a facilitator facilitate a group of master performers, subject matter experts, and sometimes novice performers and supervisors and managers of the target audience. Beware of GIGO, garbage in, garbage out. Always strive for good stuff in and good stuff out. I've been practicing, publishing, and presenting on these methods since 1982. My recent book, Six Pack, covers all of this in great detail.